lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim Robinson. Well, fellas, hey, it's that time of year again, man. I'm so excited. Listen, let's just have some fun. This was a tough year, but we're all here. So let's do a bit for everybody. Holiday season, baby. We're going to have some fun. Let's do this thing, man. Let's do it big from us to you. Spread some love, peace and holiday cheer. It's that season, special time of the year. So go and grab your family, friends too. Let's celebrate the baby boy. It's the same me and you. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. I'm 
coming to change the game. Shake his head in the friction lane. Jesus Christ, the one that I claim. The name above my name. He's supernatural, like a superhero. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Six figures, heroes. I'm working hard for the kingdom. Spread the word everywhere in the land. The sake of our children, send on the word of God to bless every man. No matter who you are, I'm not the one to judge. If you are crook of blood, a street thug, or somebody's plug, I'm still gonna show you love. I used to be in the game. Until I got on my knees and called out my hero's name. Father in heaven, forgive me for my sins. My life is torn apart. Gotta leave a new start. Believing in you, I can win. Again and again and again. He would catch me when I was falling. Getting high like a time fly. I was ready to die. My name, he was calling. His mercy and grace saved my life. Protected me from the evil. All the hatred and anger in my people. He is my hero. He's my hero. He's my hero. He's my superhero. 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 He's my superhero
And again, I don't do this for me. I do it for you all because I love you all and I care about you. And I just want to help you. Why? Because I'm a giver. I'm not a taker. And I give you good advice. All right? Here we go. Now, this uh, first segment we're going to do tonight uh, is a segment that uh, I introduced uh, about about eight uh, about eight or nine months ago. And this segment is whose baby is that? Now I tell you what everybody knows. Everybody has uh, that that relative or, or that friend, that coworker, or even that stranger. Uh, that has that one child or that one baby, and and they're just doing things, or 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 they look a certain way, they act a certain way, and you're like, you know what? That could never be my child. That could never be my baby because I my baby wouldn't carry on like that, wouldn't look like that, wouldn't act like that. Whose baby is that? Now, of course, uh, that could be your baby though. It could be a family member's baby. It could be a a friend's baby, a co-worker's baby, could be a stranger in the streets baby. But I believe it's our duty and obligation to point out to people when you know what, their child is just not right. Here it is. If you don't recognize any of these, any of the babies that you know, well, then I feel sorry for you because you're a sorry parent. Because all of these babies, all of these babies are wrapped up in the yo kids. And you just not a good parent because your baby is foul. Your child is living foul. Here we go. Whose baby is that? Number one. Whose baby is that? I'm just asking a question. Six months old with a receding hairline. Whose baby is that? Let me tell you something. Won't you just say If your baby is six months old and, and, and their baby hair is receding, you know what? It, it, it's... Just put a head on their head. And you know what? I, I don't understand. Uh, uh, when you got a, a, a baby and it's a girl, and, and they got their receding hairline, and then you you won't put a head on the head, but you'll put that little uh, that little uh, headband around their head, and and you'll put it on there. You'll put a pink one so people know it's a girl. But you know what? It don't. It, you know it, it really don't help because their hair is receding and they look a hot mess. Put a head on the baby head, okay? Whose baby is that? Number two, whose baby is that? Four years old, and their hair look like burnt rice on their head. Y'all done seen that baby. I knew y'all done seen that baby. Hair just matted up. I mean, and and, and, and hair just, I mean, it's, it's like somebody just, like, they took burnt rice and, or, or burnt popcorn kernels and just super glued them on their head. You can't even straighten their hair out. It's just so tight, like they like their hair is making a, a little micro fist. Come on now, come on, cut your baby's hair off. If your baby's hair is that nappy, trust me, it ain't gonna get no better. Okay, if it start out nappy, it's gonna end up nappy because it's gonna always be nappy. Come on, man, won't you won't you cut that baby rice off? Okay, nobody needs to see your baby looking like that with their hair looking like burnt rice on it. Number three, whose baby is that? Three years old with buck teeth. Now, if your baby is three years old and they got buck teeth, you must, you know what? I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying it can't be corrected. I'm just, I'm, I, I just hope and pray. I just hope and pray. If he's three years old and he got buck teeth already, them is, buck, them is his baby teeth. And all, and, and once he gets his permanent teeth, they won't be buck. So hopefully, his his baby teeth is buck. But then his intermittent teeth, they not buck. And then his adult teeth will grow in straight, so they not buck. Otherwise, if your baby got buck teeth and then they still buck, or when they get to the intermediate stage and then the adult stage, then uh, I, I hate to say it, but you, your, your child's teeth going to be forever bucked up. Uh, number four, whose baby is that? One years old and already know how to steal. Y'all just seen them babies. Y'all just seen them babies. You, you be holding a conversation, not paying attention. They don't think you're paying attention. They'll sneak up, tiptoe, snatch up something, and then try to run high. Come on now. You teaching your baby how to be a cat burglar? Whose baby is that? Number five, whose baby is that? Three years old, still wearing pampers. I know y'all know this baby. I know y'all know this baby. That's so trifling on the parent's part. If you don't probably train that baby, he got no reason to, to, to be three years old wearing pampers. 
I, I know I wouldn't change it. Come on now. Get your baby in, in uh, potty train. Num- n- number six. Whose baby is that? Lord Jesus. Y'all know this baby, too. Take food out their mouth and then try and put it in yours. <laughs> I wish you would. Hey, that's just, that. See, that's how babies get hit in the chin. I'm going to check your chin. You're trying to take some food out your mouth and put it in mine. That's nasty. Nobody want it. If you don't want it, how the hell do you think I want it? You know what I'm saying. Anyway, whose baby is that? Number seven. Lord Jesus. They know how to say more cuss words than regular words. Yeah, whose baby is that? What y'all teaching the baby? No, man, whose baby is that? Why they eating boogers like they look gummy snacks? Them ain't gummy snacks. Them is boogers, okay? Them is... Okay, anyway. Whose baby is that? Number nine, Lord Jesus. Cry when you put them in the bed. But then, act like they don't want to get up in the morning. Wait a minute. You wait a minute. <laughs> Well, wait a minute. Now, when I, I told you to go to bed and I put you in the bed, you cried and acted a fool. Now it's time to get up, and you still cry and act a fool because you want to sleep. Uh-uh. No. Uh-uh. And that ain't how it works. And finally, number 10, whose baby is that? Well, stand there and pee on themselves right there in the middle of the floor. But then get upset when you make them walk around like that all day. <laughs> yeah. You did that to yourself. And I ain't even, as you know what, I don't even feel sorry for you. I bet that'll teach you. Walking around here uh, smelling like Mr. Clean. I, 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 I bet once you, once you uh, get tired of smelling them, them fumes coming from your legs, uh, that'll teach you less not to stand there and pee on yourself. Next segment we get into, I told you I'm happy, y'all, is the out of order segment. Now, the out of order, y'all know it's been one of the staples of the Sunday with nuts we drink. And this out of order has helped so many people because there's so many of you all that are. Um, living in an out of order situation or an out of order life. You all don't even know it. You don't even realize you're living out of order. And that's why I'm here. See, out of order could be you, it could be a family member, it could be a friend, it could be a co worker, could be a stranger in the street. So when you sit at the local grocery store, at the bank, or even as you're walking through the park on a beautiful, sunny, but chilly day, I believe it's our obligation to point out things and situations to people that are out of order so we can help them get what? In order. If you don't recognize any of these anybody you know, then shame on you because all of them are you and your life is totally out of order. So get your life in order, all right? That's why I'm here to help you. Number one, if this is you, you're out of order. If your nose hair blends in with your mustache, you out of order. First of all, trim your nose hair. That's nasty. That that's just nasty. Okay. One thing I I, I, I can't stress enough is during this season, it is imperative that you trim your nose hair. The last thing that anybody wanna see is you standing in, in front of them in the cold, shaking and shivering and and, and your nose hair so long is Flowing down into your mustache, and so it looked like literally you got boogers or, or droplets of snot sliding down your nose hair like firefighters going to a fire. Come on now, get your nose hair in order. Number two, if this is you, are, you are out of order. If you got a ringworm in your chest hair, you know what that's just telling me. You ain't even showering. Come on now, that's nasty. Get your chest hair. Get get, get you know what. Uh, Get your, uh, your 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 body bodily uh, cleanliness in order, okay? And this is you showing up out of order. If you got patches of hair missing out your wig, women, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You walking around with bald spots in your wig, it's time for you to get another wig, and you out of order, and you look a hot mess. And this is you showing up out of order. If you got a glass eye. With a crack in it Be more careful with your glass eye Okay It ain't a marble It's a glass eye Quit playing with it so much If this is you You're showing up out of order If you're in a water bed Wrapped up 
in an electric blanket. So if you're in a water bed and you got an electric blanket wrapped around you, you, you know what you have to order because you're asking for trouble. What if you mess around and, 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 and spring a leak? A, a, a puncture, a hole in your water bed. You got your electric blanket. You gonna mess around and shock yourself and electrocute yourself to death. You gonna fry yourself. Come on now. Get rid of the water bed. I throw away the electric blanket. Preferably, I would say get rid of the water bed. Okay, water bed ain't water beds ain't been sound since well. Uh, when has the water bed been in sound? It's been so long. Anyway. Get your water bed thing in order and get your regular mattress. If this is you, you show sure enough out of order. If you just now getting last Christmas's layaway out, yeah, you out of order. Look here, let me tell you something. I wish you would hand me some a, 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 a gift from last Christmas, especially if it's some food, like a big uh, canister of a uh, 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 different popcorns. No, you ain't finna. No, what you're not finna give me? <laughs> you're not finna give me last year's big can of popcorn. I'm not, cause I'm, not, I, I, I'm not gonna eat it, cause it's bad. If this is you, you show enough out of order. If your hairline is tattooed on, let me ask you a question, stupid. If your hairline is tattooed on, what happens when you lose the rest of your hair? So basically, what you gonna have is a hairline and no hair. How stupid is that? Is it? If this is you, you showing up out of order. You're welcome. I, I, I appreciate that because I ain't helping you. If this is you, you out of order. If you tell the Walmart greeter, uh-uh, don't talk to me. Wait a minute. That's the man's job. Or that's that woman's job. They're a greeter. They're supposed to say, hello, welcome to Walmart. You don't have an attitude. Why are you going to get mad at them for trying to do their job? That's what they get paid for, to greet you, to talk to you, to say hi to you, to speak to you. You're going to tell them, don't talk to me. You know what? Leave them folk alone. You don't mess around and get them fired. But this is you. You show them out of order. Lord Jesus. If you sell a homemade cookies in a Girl Scout cookie box, now you didn't, you didn't took your piece of tape and rolled on it and put it over the Girl Scout cookie, uh, the, the name of the cookie, and made up your own name. Like, uh, uh, uh-ohs and peanut butter surprise. The surprise is uh, they lemon cookies. Come on now. Stop that. You're ruining the reputation of these Girl Scouts. And finally, if this is you, you out of order. If you're putting styrofoam plates in the dishwasher so you can clean them and reuse them, you're stupid and you're out of order. You're welcome. I told y'all I was happy, y'all. I don't, I, you know what? Y'all don't, y'all don't owe me anything other than the fact that I just want y'all to do right, okay? Take this advice and use it, okay, because it's for you. Now, this next, uh, and, well, it's not really a segment. Uh, these are what I call random thoughts. And the reason why I call them random thoughts is because that's exactly what they are. They're just random thoughts. And then my random thoughts, things that I think of uh, that come to my mind, and I'm just like, hmm, what was that? Why do I think that way? And why did I even think of that? It was just some random thoughts. So here we go. Random thoughts. Now, again, these are just, I ain't got nothing to do with you. These are my random thoughts, okay? These are my questions that I want answers to. Number one. The early bird gets the worm, but it's the second mouse that gets the cheese. Hmm. Yeah, the early bird will get the worm because he'll be first to get that. The worm, when it pops up out the ground, and then it's the second mouse that gets the cheese because the first mouse, he's got his neck snap in the mouse trap. Random thoughts. Random thought number two. I used to be afraid of the dark as a child, but as an adult, I'm no longer afraid of the dark. But I am scared that if I don't get up enough money to pay my light bills, they're going to turn it off. 
and won't turn it back on. So I'm not afraid of the dark no more. When my lights go out, I'm not scared about being in the dark. I'm scared about how long it's going to take me to get the money to pay this bill so I can have some lights off in here again. Random thoughts. Random thought number three. We tight like glue. <laughs> yeah, man, my boy, that's my best. I'm telling you, that's my boy. I'm telling you, we tight like glue. Wait a minute. But if you tight like glue, and the situation gets too hot, just like glue, does your friendship just melt away? So, and this one right here. How many licks does it take to get to the center of a tissue roll pop? Hmm. Random thoughts. Finally, we come to the church announcements. Um, now, please, uh, during this uh, this pandemic, uh, I know that uh, there have been a lot of churches that are still streaming live only and they're not having in-person services. There are some that are, are, are doing in-person services, um, and uh, they're also streaming, like we are. Um, I would tell you to please be careful and uh, still follow uh, the safety guidelines. Uh, but don't let any of that stop you from getting your praise and your worship on. And I invite you to please join us. Uh, in the sanctuary as we praise or as we uh, stream live. Uh, for we are the Jesus, take the wheel. I got the gas. Baptist Church. Now, we are small in number, but we are big in faith. Let me say it again. We are small in number, but we are big in faith. The reason why I like to do the church announcement is because, well, I want to make sure that Everybody's on the same page. Everybody's kept abreast of what's going on, what's in the body. There's no confusion. Everybody's on one accord. There is no safe like to do church announcements for individuals uh, that, uh, well, uh, that, that, that may not have actually been able to attend the in-person service or watch us as we stream. Because for some reason they don't have access to the internet. For the sick to get and to shut it up in. Also like to do the announcement for individuals that may have uh, attended the in-person service. Uh, may have even watched it as we stream live. But missed some parts or all of the announcements because they were busy uh, running their mouth. Okay? Or passing little notes. Or telling little secret side jokes about stuff. <laughs> well, I will admit, <laughs> man, what? When Deacon Monty T fell out his mouth, <laughs> and Mother Jones stepped on him and broke him, <laughs> man, they ready to fight. Boy, it took about five of us to pull him apart. <laughs> and what made me so mad was y'all saw mother. Then she looked down before she stepped on that man's teeth. <laughs> that, was, that was nothing but the devil. <laughs> that was some fun stuff, boy. Lord Jesus, forgive me for that, but that was fun. I mean, she looked down before she stepped. She looked down and then stepped on that man. man and broke that man's smile up like that. <laughs> Man, I was mad. Look, I'd have been mad enough to fight or two. But anyway, announcer number one. <laughs> and we're going to pray for both of them. And, and, and we're going to pray that peace be still. <laughs> announcer number one. Uh, Brother Sherman, please stop running and jumping around and shouting in the church. I, I, you know what? I just don't. And I'm not I'm not questioning God, but I'm, I'm questioning you. I just don't believe when when you start running and jumping and shouting like that in the church uh, that that's the Holy Spirit. I, I just don't, I I find it hard to believe that 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 God has anything to do with that. And the reason being is because I, I don't I, I don't see why 
or, or, or see how God would give you the spirit and put the spirit in you to have you jumping and running and around and shouting in the church when you already come to church funky. Enough number two. Uh, Mother Pearl, uh, bless your heart. I know you, uh, you, you just turned 80 earlier this year. But you know better, and and uh, I'm just gonna call, I'm just gonna call you I'm gonna call you out I'm gonna call that thing out. You know better, and you know what nasty is, and, and what you and, and what you did was just nasty. You don't do it no more, Mother Pearl. I'm telling you, don't do it no more. Don't you bring no doggone uh, bag in here and, and start handing these handing out uh, 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 boiled eggs to these kids. That's just nasty. First of all, who the heck told you the kids want to eat boiled eggs? Huh? Then gave, gave my grandson one. I almost broke his wrist slapping that doggone boiled egg out of his hand. <laughs> Quit bringing these boiled eggs and handing them these kids. There ain't nobody letting no, nobody, they letting their kids eat no boiled eggs come from you. Stop it. Now, number three, Deacon Johnson, I'm going to tell you this, and I'm not going to discuss it no more. Deacon Johnson, please quit bombing cigarettes off me. Okay? Quit doing it. Quit bombing cigarettes off me, and then you ain't never got none for me to bomb off of you. Huh? Hell, I want to be a bomb, too. And that's number four. Uh, Sister Tanya, uh, let me tell you something. <laughs> you, you, you can quit it with all them lies because we, we, we'll get to the truth. But I'm going to tell you now, you, you quit all the lies. You're know, you, you, you just trying to get up in our pockets. You're trying to get up in our cheddar, cheddar cheese. But here, let me tell you something, Sister Tanya. My son Lamont ain't your baby daddy, okay? And he has no problem taking a DNA test. He ain't got no problem taking no DNA, no DNA test. Okay? Matter of fact, he's going to take a doggone DNA test. Okay? You just let him know when you want him to take it and give him enough time so he can study for it. Finally, we come to the part of the announcement I always look forward to, not looking forward to. It is the uh, building fund. As you know, the building fund offers us a little bit of everything. It offers humor, horror, drama, adventure. Most of all, Unpredictability. At the end of the day, the building fund has raised. You know what? Okay. <laughs> I, y'all, boy, y'all think the pastor won't pull his pistol outside of you, folks. As of today, the building fund has raised, and I quote, more than a few eyebrows. Yeah. See, and y'all, <laughs> yeah. This is what this is this is what the building fund is raised more than a few eyebrows. Okay. <laughs> and, and y'all, y'all got the dirt to wonder when uh, every time now we have Sunday dinner, we limit y'all on how much food y'all can have. Me and my wife, that's our food. And that's why we ration it out like we do. And yeah, we got we always have more food on our plate, and we can always come back for second and third because it's our food. Y'all ain't broke nothing. You're lucky we give y'all a spoonful of carrot, a spoonful of corn, a half of a pork chop. It's our food. We gave no money. I ain't put no food in it. At least put five on it. Run my pressure up. Well, thank you so much for joining me for another Sunday with Nuts with Trey. And I tell you what, like I always want to do, I want to close us out in prayer. So I ask that all is about. All eyes are closed. Unless, of course, you're blind, because uh, if you're blind, it really don't matter, does it? I mean, seriously? Really? For real? Wow. Oh, Lord. 
Thank you for another Sunday when nuts we try. Thank you for another opportunity to come together in fun, faith, and fellowship. Thank you for making a way out of Norway. Opening doors and no man can shut. Thank you for being a doctor in the sick room. A lawyer in the courtroom. Mm-hmm. A air freshener in the bathroom. Mm. But most of all, Thank you for being God and God alone. Loving us more than we could even love you or our sins. Now, Lord Jesus, as we close out tonight and continue on with the rest of this Sunday, may you forever keep us, protect us, lead us, and guide us. We will be forever mindful to give you the honor, praise, and the glory. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Now, you all have a great rest of your son. And start your week out determined to make a difference in somebody's life. And remember, this is the season for giving. Let's be a giver and not a taker. And let's remember that Jesus is the reason for the season. So let's keep the Lord in our hearts. Let our actions reflect his love for us and for all mankind. Now, you all take care. I love you, and there's nothing you can do to stop my love. If you try to stop my love, oh, my love will run over you like a freight train running over a hobo, okay? Like a sports car running over the foot of a hitchhiker. My love hurts. It's painful, but it's pleasant. Now, you all have a great night. Be blessed and not stressed. I'll see you next week. It'll be more Sunday with more nuts with more Dre. I'm going to eat me a little bite of something. I'm going to put on just a little bit of weight. You guys take care. Be blessed and not stress. Good night. As we celebrate Christmas all over the world, we've come with a simple reminder. Don't forget Jesus, the Savior of the world. Don't forget he is the reason for it all. Let's sing it, friends.
forget about Jesus. Christmas without Jesus. Just sing it. 